Hey adventure people, thanks for watching. In this video we're going to go on a four day ride of what's known as the Great Scenic Loop through Idaho and Montana. You could probably also call this the river tour as we follow along the banks of the Salmon, Bitterroot, Locksaw, Clearwater, and Payette Rivers. Let's ride! Our trip starts in Boise, Idaho as we head out north on Highway 21. We'll follow the highway through Idaho City to Stanley and then on to the city of Chalice. Total distance for the day will be about 200 miles. This initial section of 21 is one of my favorite local rides as it follows Moores Creek to the little town of Idaho City, population 465. Trudy's Kitchen is a popular weekend ride destination for Boise riders. Past Idaho City, we continue up Highway 21, which is also known as the Ponderosa Pine Scenic Byway, through the Boise National Forest to Moores Creek Summit at just over 6,000 feet. After a conveniently timed break, we head down the other side. This section of 21 from Idaho City over the summit and down is a narrow, very twisty two-lane road, ideal for motorcycles, but may not be as enjoyable in a vehicle if you're prone to car sickness. I descend down into the teeny town of Loman and head northeast along the banks of the South Fork of the Payette River, which is a popular rafting destination. Eventually we leave the river and drop down to some wide open vistas. I catch a few brief rain showers which were a foreshadowing for what was to come. Eventually I catch the first glimpses of the Sawtooth Mountain Range. These views have to rank in anyone's top 5 most beautiful mountains. There are 57 peaks in this range over 10,000 feet high. Much of the Clint Eastwood film Pail Rider was filmed here, along with several commercials. At the base of the Sawtooth is the little town of Stanley, population 70. This is a very popular starting destination for their adventurous folks. Hiking, fishing, hunting, rafting, climbing, it's all here. I was originally planning on stopping at Sawtooth Loose's restaurant for lunch, but the looming weather and the late start I got convinced me I better keep going. From Stanley, we turn north onto Highway 75. This is the headwaters of the mighty Salmon River, which will be our companion for much of the rest of the trip. Highway 75 is also known as the Salmon River Scenic Byway. The initial part of this section looks like much of what we've seen, heavily forested canyons following along the river, but soon the geology changes and we see more sparse rocky landscapes. Beautiful rock outcroppings show up around every corner. Unfortunately, this is also when I lost my race with the oncoming storm. For a solid 30 minutes I was hammered with large hail and no place to pull over and seek refuge. Even though my riding gear is waterproof, hail at 60 miles an hour hurts. Reaching the end of the scenic byway, we turn onto Highway 93 and drive into Chalice, Idaho, population 1000, and our stop for the night. It turned out it was prime rib night at the Village Inn Motel, which is a huge win since I hadn't eaten since this morning. A good day riding. The next day... The 
plan for day two is to ride another 200 miles from Chalice to Lolo, Montana. I continued north up Highway 93 following the Salmon River. Many more beautiful vistas and virtually no other traffic. I rode a long time without seeing another car. Once in the little town of Salmon, I made a detour. It turned out that some friends happened to be camping there, so after catching up, we decided to take an out-of-the-way excursion to a unique lunch spot. At the little town of North Fork, the Salmon River makes a turn to the west. It makes its run through the Frank Church River of No Return Wilderness and the Gospel Hump Wilderness areas. We took a dirt road roughly 20 miles to a little place called the Ram's Head Cafe in Shoop, Idaho. We ate some great burgers and watched the rafters heading to the put-in for the main Salmon River. After lunch, we parted ways and I continued north into Montana. The ride from Salmon over the border is amazing. Fantastic scenery and super fun twisty roads. Eventually I got to the town of Darby, Montana. If I do this ride over again, this is where I'd stay. It seems like a very cute little town with plenty of exploring to do. I continued on to the town of Lolo, which turned into a bit of a freeway slog. Lolo itself wasn't terribly inspiring. I settled into my room and dreamed of tomorrow's ride. The next day. Day three's ride was pretty much the point of the entire trip. Today's route follows Highway 12 back into Idaho to the town of Kamiya. It's a short day, only about 150 miles, but this is clearly a bucket list ride for any motorcyclist. Highway 12 is also known as the Northwest Passage Scenic Byway, or the Lolo Pass. It's a smooth flowing road with plenty of twisty stuff to keep you entertained. But the scenery is just spectacular. The road goes through the Selway Bitterroot Wilderness and starts out following the Crooked Fork River. It eventually turns into the beautiful Locksaw River. It was hard to keep my eyes on the road, I was so busy looking at the scenery. I stopped to check out the historic Locksaw Ranger Station, built in 1927. Lots of neat original buildings remain. I'm glad I got to see it as it closed a few days later for the rest of the summer for repairs. The 
mile after mile of spectacular views in motorcycle nirvana. Eventually the Selway River joins the Locksaw and becomes the middle fork of the Clearwater River. I follow that to the brown rolling hills that mark the edge of the wilderness to the town of Kamiya. Today was a fantastic ride, but I managed to pick one of the hottest days of the summer. At 100 degrees, I was cooked. I retreated to my air-conditioned room and rested for the final day tomorrow. The next day. After a tasty breakfast provided by the motel, I backtracked a bit to Highway 13, which took me to Grangeville and Highway 95 and my eventual destination of McCall, Idaho. This final morning we left Kamiya, rolled through some small farming communities, following the south fork of the Clearwater River. Eventually we get to Harpster Grade, a steep, windy, twisty climb up to a high plateau. Crossing that plateau, we enter Grangeville, Population 3200. From Grangeville, we hop on Highway 95 and turn south. This takes us to the infamous White Bird Hill. From the summit, you overlook the location of the 1877 Nez Pierce War. The grade itself is very steep, high speed turns, lots of traffic. You definitely need to pay attention going down this one. At the bottom I ran into our old friend the Salmon River. At this point, the salmon is running north to join the Snake River. The canyons are very volcanic and rocky. The river is at least three times bigger than it was when we last saw it. Highway 95 takes us to the town of Riggins, Idaho, which is where the salmon comes out of the wilderness and makes it turn north. An enjoyable ride from Riggins along the Little Salmon River, crossing the 45th parallel to the town of New Meadows. Here we turn onto Highway 55 and make the short ride into the Payette National Forest and the resort town of McCall, my final destination. I hope you enjoyed this little tour of my state. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Until next time, go out and find an adventure.